This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Once again to Football Daft, it is the Daft of Scottish Football podcast round. I am producer John, uh, back presenting because who's missing yet again? Stephen Purton. Lifted on the inside of the night, so. What did he get lifted? Aye. Do you not hear what happened? No. <sighs> Fucking Paulus came through his door. Paulus <laughs> came through his door? No, John, Aye. Mate. Really? Aye. Aye. Don't. Right, he, didn't he was, tell anyone. He was selling uh, counterfeit River City t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> counterfeit <laughs> Dodgy bastard, that Bob Harris, I tell you. Um, that man. Bob Harris? I don't know his name. Is it not Bobo Bo- Harris? Bobo Harris. It's Bobo Harris. 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 The gentleman with me, however, uh, let's first of all welcome a man who has this be- week been kicking about on motorbikes for the Glasgow Speedway. He's been hanging about with Katrina Shearer, former BBC newsreader at Ibrox. And do you know what, Grado? You were part of my little boy's French homework this week. Good job. No. Tell me. What happened? So uh, he was asked uh, to, to find details about a celebrity and write them in <laughs> French. He said, it's great to watch a celebrity. And I said, nah, uh, 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 up, man, he's one of the best known cunts in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> so he was writing about you in his French homework. Do you have to write it in French? I had to write it in French. What did he say? I had to write down, is his real name Graham Steve? Well, he said yes. I had to write on the cost. Stevenson on the cost. <laughs> All right. You had to write your birthday in French. Je m'appelle Graham. <laughs> El Grand Cot. J'habita on the cost. I think, he said, is he 34? And I said, oh. 33. 33. Oh, yeah. oh, that's good, man. Is that your show busy age? No, no, it's my show age. I think in Wikipedia it says 34. But ah, I don't believe right, Wikipedia. Don't believe what fucking... you hear in Wikipedia then. It says I'm 19 staying on there. There's <laughs> <laughs> a few fucking windies I go over that. <laughs> <laughs> and that man that you hear over there, right, he's written a full song off, off the back, off the back of um, Celtic putting on Twitter, which is our big question this week, uh, off the back of Celtic putting, you yacht to have faith. Chris Toll has written a full song about Yota to the words, to the song um, of You Gotta Have Faith I'm by George really Michael. I've full right, song, okay, I've just changed one word. Right. Do you, do you, do you. Oh, well, I guess it would be nice. If I could touch a jata, I know not every jata is a jata like you. But I gotta think twice before I give my heart away. And I know all the games you play, Rafe Rovers too. Oh, but I need some time off from that emotion. Time to pick my heart up off the floor. And when that love goes down in the box without <laughs> devotion, well, it takes a strong man, baby, but I'm showing you the door because I gotta have faith. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Oh, I, cool. can, I can hear it in the terraces oh, right now. Oh, <laughs> I may take it to but it was. Baby! <laughs> a key change from the fucking Celtic <laughs> supporters. Oh, amazing. That's brilliant, man. Absolutely amazing. So, I, uh, talking about Celtic, Chris, we. You had Celtic Daft and Rangers Daft available both on the channel just now. What did you make of the Aberdeen game at the weekend? I think we had just done enough to win it, and that's something that's been missing. Aye. So it's a, it's a step forward that gets a monkey off the back with the away, the away record as well. So hopefully we can kick on for here, but I was saying that all last season, I know. Hopefully we can kick on for here. Aberdeen are rotten, but Aber- Aberdeen are in trouble, eh? Uh, well, what I heard was. Aberdeen, what a team, can he kick a jelly ball? <laughs> Celtic, <laughs> Celtic can he kick a ball, Rangers are the best of her. Um, <laughs> is that what you heard, is it? <laughs> After, like, I, I, mean, they are, they, I mean, I don't know what, you look at that squad that went up, up against Celtic, like, and you go, look at that team, and that's probably, for me, the best squad outside the old firm. Easily. I don't know how mm. they're, not, they're not pulling it Aye. together. Maybe Aye. they're just in a transitional period as well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They've, yeah. they've had how long with Derek McInnes? What, 10 years or something, was it? Aye. Can never get kicked in the arse off yet, anyway. Aye, well. You know what I mean? So the, the club's going to need to adapt to a new management style and, you know, fuck it. Well, no, but it's like Boyd said, it's all about, it doesn't matter, or this playing good football and all that, you've got to win games. Oh, <laughs> well, win games, so. 
Aye, it doesn't hurt. Well, the only one getting inside from Chris Moy doesn't hurt. Aye, it doesn't doesn't hurt when the referee's singing cunts off and stuff. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Uh, We were on Ranger staff, me and Gradle this week. Stephen again missing. Um, We were talking about Stovies. How were your Stovies, Gradle? Stovies were good. I gave half them to my news reader. Um, and he said they were superb. Right, so it was sausage. On we came in, so sausage. Oh, I got on the phone now. I know that news reader for go. <laughs> well, That's the guy that we deliver the cookies to, isn't it? I, I can't just get fucking scram delivered there all the time. Honestly, see when I'm making dinner, like at five o'clock at night, and if there's, there's a big portion, I've got to get out of Joe in the morning. I feel good turning That's up a, a wee Tupperware box for nice, your dinner, Joe. Right. There you go, and he's delighted. And Don't get me wrong, he's sitting, we're sitting in here starving out of fucking hell. <laughs> <No. laughs> Don't hell. get me wrong, man, it's a bit. Disgusting when he starts tanning it at like quality <laughs> seven. I've seen him eat beef curries and all that at like seven in the morning. I've seen that. I've, Fish I've, cakes I've and all that. A cold curry in the morning. Oh, I think everyone's done that. Yeah. I think I think it all depends and like when you work. See if you do night shifts and all that. Aye. I come off night shift. And I could eat. Missing ties. I could eat a fish supper. Aye, because your body's set up to that fucking time. You know, like a coke, like a coke, you didn't even heat it in the microwave, you just go straight for a coke. Straight in for it, mate. No, no, no. Really? You, can't, you need to heat up the rice. What? You need to heat up the rice. No, if you need to heat the rice, heat the rice, it's bad for you, mate. No, I heard my mum, my mum tell me that you need to heat the rice straight up. Aye, dead hot. What happened to her? <laughs> I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> well, we promise football daft meets will be back really, really soon. When Stephen gets back and he usually books interviews, that'll be back soon. But we're going to oh, line up loads great. of guests oh, in the man. next week while we've got a couple of belters up our sleeve. We promise you that'll be back soon. Uh, let's, been, let's kick through what's been happening in Scottish football. Oh. We'll lead to earlier on the red card for Ryan Porteous at the weekend. Chris, you didn't think it was a sending off. I and it's, it's not because he's dead. No, I need to put any perspective the fact that. Jojo Szymanovic nearly put Kenny Miller into fucking orbit and it wasn't even a free kick. That is true, yes. Right, so the, maybe it is a red card if you look at the rules, but my problem is with the consistency. Right. You know, it's... I don't know. Fucking I mean, it was him, was it? We Jack getting the boot in his face at Rugby Park. We're on, we're on, we're on an agreement. Morelos stamping on Porteous. There's plenty of... Plenty, that's what I'm saying. There's plenty of different there is. isolated incidents. Yeah. There is. But what we're what, what, what wanting for if the referee gets it right, Fortunately, on Sunday, the referee Nick Walsh stood up. He got had it to be right. And he got it right. Yeah, he, he absolutely. I think he did get it right. So I mean, we can't I'm, start I'm, moaning I'm, about I'm other get, decisions I'm when Sunday makes it right. Richmond on my Facebook, right? Why have you got Charlie Richmond because on your I Facebook? Was, I was chatting him up to come on the show. Right, and did he up for it? I think he's feeling manic about this, isn't he? He is up for it. I've just never ever got back to him. For fuck's sake, get Charlie Richmond on. Get Charlie Richmond on there. Is he for a win? I think so. He's running about that neck of the woods anyway. And he says, where are the law? It's a red card. Right. So. Oh, don't you message them? What? No, 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 he got, <laughs> no. <laughs> see, do you know what he does on he puts Facebook? On Facebook. He puts on uh, like uh, ratings, he like referee performances on Is Facebook. Oh, that's good. Goes, well, get him on the show. We'd love to see him. Anyway, Hibs have lost. He's not Ray Montgomery. Hibs have lost the appeal against the red card, so it stands in there. Uh, Ryan Portugal missed the games against Dundee United. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Portugal missed the games. Ryan Portugal, mate. <laughs> I said Porteous. You said Porteous. did not shut up. Listen, see, but what do you think about that boy? Is for me, he probably could have a good career, but he's got too much carry on this year, too. He's full of wee motors, he's, isn't he? He just he's wants... He's full of wee motors. He's a good seller half, though. I know. He's is a very really good seller half. Ah, he's, he's a great is seller half. He? Like, well, look at how the game changed. You're right, you're bang on, because up until they got a player sent half, they could have won that game fairly easy. Aye. Not fairly easy, but they looked... They looked I wouldn't have better, been surprised they better side. if they had scored... Again, it wouldn't have surprised me. Yep. Um, uh, but they put us in the front foot. It made us kind of turn up a wee bit, obviously, when it gets in. Don't get me wrong, I was nervous as well, because sometimes it can want no in your favour. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'll, I'll show you this now. <laughs> I, think, I think, yeah, you go to Easter Road, you go to Tincastle. I mean, I think Hibs and Hearts can be right in about it this season. Hearts, the Hearts game is going to be me too. Hibs and Hearts, I think when you when Rangers and Celtic, obviously Celtic turned up at Tincastle and got beat off mm-hmm. there. I mean, same, I mean, Hibs and Hearts are right good this season. I think they could be well in there come the end of the season. Um, so, uh, talking about other things, uh, UEFA are going to investigate um, the incident against Sparta Prague. Obviously, Gwen Kamara getting booed and jeered. Uh, so, if you're going to have a look into that, I mean, it's disgusting, isn't it? I mean, the kids, in, just 10,000 kids in that uh, 
stadium and Kamara, Roof, all these players getting booed. It's just, it needs to change, man. It's, you know what? It's, that shows you that it's a learned behaviour. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And these kids, and then they're coming out saying, don't have a go at our kids. Mm. Well, don't raise your kids to be wee fucking fannies, and then we won't have a go at them. <laughs> there you go. That's the UEFA yeah, delegate. Man. That's the UEFA delegate. Just turned up there. Would um, you stop raising your kids as fannies right now? That was a quote for uh, <laughs> Michelle <it>. Platini. <laughs> And obviously it's international week uh, this week as well. Scotland against Israel uh, and the uh, Faroe Islands as oh, well. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, oh. at Hamden. Um, what are you thinking, boys? Think we can do it against Israel? I'd like to think so. <clears throat> yeah. Hopefully, man. Hopefully, you'll uh, be there, Grado. Oh, we're we coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll be there with his tartan scarf. His Come on, Jimmy Scotland. Hat. No, he's got his Scotland singlet that he wears to the Scotland games. Oh, so he has, aye. He's so he has. No, I've got my Snidey GD Sports rap off one without the umbrella on it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, fingers crossed Scotland can do it against uh, Israel, Faroe Islands, and get through to the next round. That would be great. Um, but and now, you know, we did this last week. There's not been much because it's international week. We thought we'd look at some of the stories that are a bit daft. So I've got two stories from Falkirk for you for, you know, me and Grado are in Breakfast Radio. Grado, there's Go, I do Clyde, and we, we come across these stories. So here's the first story that we've come across this week, Chris. An exhausted Falkirk mum has shared a bizarre trick to help a toddler son sleep after she was left in look, left looking like a zombie. What kind of trick do you think she did? Sleeping on her breasts. No, uh, no, no. To get chloroform. The- <laughs> no, she's an form the laddie, uh, this four-year-old boy. So what, she went out and she bought a melon. So this uh, kid was kicking about with a melon. She put it in the bed with the kid. He hugged the melon. Great night's sleep ever since well, he did the melon. you know what they say? You get melons, you make. Melon here. Melon here. Is still game on it? Was that only still game? I can't remember. Um, All you- I know is, what the fuck's she then? I don't, what do you mean she got a melon? Oh, she got a melon. Sl- how she got to that? He's no sleeping. I know what I'll do. I'll buy him a melon. She no. probably read it on mum's net. No, apparently he's, he became obsessed with this me- melon. So she put it in the bed with the, the kid and had a great night's sleep. And that's, that what was did he do? Cut a hole in it? No. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> um, I so there you go. If you if you having trouble with kids sleeping, buy them a melon. Um, but it only lasted. Obviously, the melon the melon went off. Um, and the best thing about it, what do you think the melon was called? Melanie. <laughs> it was close. It was called Mel. <laughs> but I mean, so there you go. Buy a melon if you're having trouble sleeping. You might need this advice, Grado, because your Wayne's on the way. Oh, so there you go. Oh, no, no, the old mum's net. And another, I've been on it. another story from Falkirk. Scots baffled by black leather fetish bench for sale on Facebook. The custom made item is being flogged for two hundred pound after a buyer failed to collect it from Falkirk. So this person's a specialist in obviously making sex furniture <laughs> but i don't know if that's even a specialist subject but they made uh, this black leather fetish bench the good news however is it, it it's a, a sexy that comes di- decorative with diamond studs <laughs> and a removable metal bar so if you can imagine it's like a stool with a uh, two metal kind of handlebars coming out the side right so you could maybe remove the metal bars if you didn't want to have it and have a nice little stool for your living i can't have a picture of this but was it right, so I, i've no. got i've got a, i've got see like a big wheel right. i get one of the benches in my mind because it's got the metal bar in that so <laughs> what the big wheel the ferris wheel Aye. So you know, like when you go in that and the wee bar comes over you. How you got that for? So for sitting on the couch? I, I, no, I'm saying I've got that in my head. To be oh, right. Right. I, I thought he said bar. he's got one. That's what I thought he said. I thought it's well. Hankies if I was off the couch. <laughs> to strap him in. Um, it's my high chair. Sammy, strap me in. <laughs> Sammy, strap me in. It's dinner time, man. <laughs> uh, so I know, uh, if you can picture like a stool, and then in the side of the stool, it's like a handlebar, like so metal bar. It's basically, if you're, if you're bending over and getting shagged, for the hand, John, that's what it's for. That's what it's for. I'm just saying, Grado, this so it's available to buy uh, or on Facebook Marketplace, which obviously you try to advertise, f- advertise this for one of your mates or something. It's him that's made it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you struggling, Biggin? <laughs> no, no, if I'm buying a fucking sex store, though. <laughs> um, yeah, by the way, yeah, if you're bending over. 
<laughs> so uh, that's some of the stories we've come across this week. Oh, um, later, we'll talk more football on the open. We will be playing for pies in the player profile playoff. On the big question, we are taking inspiration from Chris Toe and Celtics. You ought to have faith as we ask you to take something from Scottish football and turn it into a song. And we'll reveal last week's swankiest moments with El Dorado Tonic Wine, and you get to vote on a new one as well. Uh, Green has got three riddles this week. Yes, yeah, free. And on teammates, it's Dundee United captain Mark Reynolds, who was one of our favourite guests and has an absolute belter of a teammate. So that's all to come. Right, we've got in the studio none other than the one, the only, Nicole from G4 Claims. I've not saw you in a good wee while. It's good to see you, Nicole. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Gonna tell, I'm all right. Can I tell me a wee bit more about the G4 Claims and the, the benefits we can reap? Yes, I would absolutely <laughs> love to. <laughs> So, G4 Claims is an accident management company. We can help you from the side of the road. That's how early we can interfere. So, if you've been involved in an accident, always phone G4 Claims first. Why would you claim against your own insurance policy and pay for your excess and, you know, get involved in, in racking up your bills for next year when potentially your claim can take six to nine months to get resolved? You want to make sure you're claiming against the at-fault insurance company directly. So, phone G4 Claims from the roadside we're actually just relocating we're in motherwell at the moment but we're going to be moving to our new premises in wishaw we'll be even closer Ooh. to you guys we'll be able to pop in and see you all the time fantastic <laughs> <laughs> and we can recover your car from anywhere we can work the full of scotland so if you're involved in an accident please phone us first it's 01698 767 172 it's not at fault claims and it's claims made, made easy, easy. the football daft open line the open line of course where anything goes can Scotland do it against Israel I think we can are we playing Israel again if we're playing Israel again there's more Scotland and Israel games than any other fixture in the world I, I think there is I, I don't think that can be argued but I think I reckon we can do it on Saturday I've got a Chris and I'll, I'll not see it so who's at Hamden mm. you Saturday. gone John I'm not I'm going to the pub I'm oh, going to get a ticket but um, is it sell out? sell out? Oh, good on them sell out are we good on them <laughs> <laughs> we pat on the head for the SFA there <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it a red card for Ryan Porches and that might have popped up Chris Toll be honest the game's fucked the game is fucked oh, it depends what angle I didn't think it was a red card when I saw it live in front of me but when I see it back yeah, yeah. Card. Uh, Stone Wall. Um, and is Stephen Glass going to crack at Aberdeen? Oh, Do you see what I did there? See I was smashing, mate. I was smashing. <laughs> joy that, joy that. Uh, he's under pressure there, eh? Uh, it must be a pain. Oh, oh. I wish there was a sort of window in his mind that we could. Oh, fuck oh fucking hell, my God. Right, uh, so we're going to eat stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into our first call on the open line. It is all the way from Australia. So, Chris, you get to do your Australian accent. Yes! Because uh, that was fucking terrible. Uh, it's Stephen who's phoned us from Canberra. Which is, by the way, the capital, if you ever uh, get that there question in a pub quiz. Yes, not Sydney. Aye, because you would Melbourne. think. Mm -hmm. Nope, Canberra Swanity. is the official capital of Australia, and he should be joining us on the line yeah, now. Well, Stephen. Get I, mate. Who's getting on? Oh, 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 that's oh, shabby. That's, that's a bit shame, of a dino. I thought you were going to be Australian, man. Well, he's going to go, G'day, mate. How you going? <laughs> <laughs> How you going? You are all right there, mate? You having a fucking one, mate? Ah, uh, it's fucking bones, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I need to ask you two two questions. Have you watched Mr. In Between? I have not. Have Have oh, you what? watched Wentworth? I've watched Wentworth. How good is Wentworth, mate? Nice. But it's the same over here. Like they, everybody thinks Australians drink Fosters. Do you know what I mean? It's just perceived wrong over here. Did he, did he still watch Home and Away Neighbours or is that still the kind of main? When I, when I was like 15, man, I was fucking all over Home and Away Neighbours. Aye. And I moved over here. Haven't you watched it one? One of my favorite. No, that's all right. One of my favorite. Actually, it's just beautiful. Tam and Sussuk. Oh, that, 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 that was our Tam shoot name. Sussuk, guys. Yes, yeah, our, um, our uh, actress. Our name in Home and Away was Danny Sutherland. Google her. Right, right. Beautiful. Here's one thing. Is it true that Australians wouldn't give a Castle Main 4X for anything else? 100%, mate. Thank fuck for that. <laughs> Adverts haven't lied I know, to us. I thought I'd been lied to my whole life. <laughs> uh, Stephen, you're on all the way from Australia. 
you grow up in Scotland, whatever, and you see all the adverts, and it's like, oh, fucking everybody drinks fossils, whatever. And you move over here, and nobody knows a fucking thing about fossils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, do you know what's funny? Right? I was talking to a woman in Australia on Wednesday who, by the way, told moved to Airdrie. Airdrie? Because wow. I'm. Who moved to Airdrie for Australia? I, know, I, swear, I swear because our boy's really good at the speedway. All right. For Glasgow Tigers. And. Uh, how, and how? How about this? I used to stay in Carnbro and I moved to Australia. Ah, uh, mate, it's just five seconds from my house. Is it? Aye, Carnbro. Well, aye. this woman's moved out here. She says she likes the place, but she doesn't like our fish and she misses the wildlife. She doesn't like our fish? And she says it's too yellow. That's what she said. Yeah. Uh, she's... It sounds like she's been fucking getting, <laughs> what do you call the ones? Is it trout? Is it trout that's yellow? No, is it no haddock? Smoke well, haddock? haddock? Smoke haddock's yellow. That's, that's painted yellow, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> that's dyed yellow. Do you want to get a different kind of fish? Like I've told her loads, but she says she misses the snakes and the tarantulas and all that. I was like, yeah, if you're not. <laughs> is that any damn <laughs> boring them? <laughs> oh, what is that? Maybe some of the best here, but it's not as good as the golden fry. Oh, exactly, man. <laughs> well, it's good as TGI Friars at the roundabout <laughs> up Eldry. Oh, boy. Uh, Stephen, you're on to, to talk about your Rangers supporter, first and foremost, but you're on to talk about something that's close to your heart. Well, it was a story I was reading, um, what did I thought of? It was a story I was reading a couple of days ago, and it was about a guy called <clears throat> Danny Hodgson, and he's from Cumbria. And he, he used to play with, oh, hold on, let me see, he used to play... He used to play in the English like Division Two or whatever, and he came over and he was playing for a Perth team called Jindaloop, and um, he was out one night with the boys and he got punched in the back of the head off a fifteen year old, fell, banged his head, ended up in a coma. So I've been kind of following his story over the last couple of weeks, and like Dean Henderson, Dominic Calvert Lewin have all donated like ten thousand dollars to the the charity or whatever the GoFundMe page. And um, it was just to raise awareness about it. Like, no one's really spoke about it over here on the news and whatnot. And you read it on the news here, and it's like, it's, it's sad. Do you know what I mean? It was just to give a bit of an insight to it. And even um, the funds are all to go. He was paying his mortgage and stuff for his wife, oh, and his family, and whatnot. And even Ronaldo um, sent a personal message, and it was like, Hi, Danny. I heard about your story. I hope you get well soon. I invite you to come to one of your games in Manchester. Um, so get well soon, my friend, and I'll see you. And that was it. But oh. it was just, uh, like, I listen to this podcast every fucking day, man. Like, I'm a landscape gardener, and I'm out working, and I'm pushing myself at Grado and uh, Toll and whatnot, and all the, the comments and stuff. And I was reading no, Stephen, because he's no fucking here ever. Uh, you, you remember that guy that used to host the show, uh, yeah, I mind him, mind him. Uh, but uh, listen, that's a cause. That's, as a cause that I need to say that. How can we get involved with the, with the sharing of the crowdfunding and all that? What would I type in to well, get I, me? I would try to find your email, Grado, and then obviously I guess you guys can give me it. And it's not even about raising money. I think they've raised like 160 grand. Uh, right. He's been in a, a coma for four weeks. Grado, um, this is go.co.uk. You could use that. Right, that so, so the guy's been in a coma for four weeks. Is he out of the coma now? He, well, this is the thing. I, I read the story today. So he was in a coma for four weeks and Perth Glory played a friendly with his local club and they raised like 10 grand and they flew his parents and stuff out. And then there was a bit of to and fro with the whole COVID thing and they got an exemption to get his parents in. Right, so they came nice. over and they were in quarantine for 14 days. Oh, and then the first day they got to see him, he opened his eyes and he had the best That's communication. Brilliant. And That's then two brilliant. days later, he went right downhill. Oh, so they're uh, just pleading, pleading for everybody to just like I don't know raise awareness and give a wee bit of money. There's obviously plenty, plenty of money there. But my thing was, I'm a massive football fan and I played in Australia and I played under Tony Vidmar and stuff like that. Like we are Tony Vidmar, nothing spirit. I was playing me. Remember that Rangers top when we get relegated and it's just got the crest on it in the 1972 on the back of the collar. Or mm-hmm. 1972. Aye, I remember um, that Perth Glory jersey, uh, the Rangers badge mm-hmm. on it. I remember. Where, where was Northern Spirit again? I know I just plucked it. Not, not, per, not Perth Glory, Northern Spirit. Aye, aye Northern so Spirit. Aye. aye. And it was uh, Rangers had <clears> like a controlling stake in them or something, something didn't like they? That, wasn't it? And Craig Moore was a manager or something at one point, or he played aye. with them as well, didn't he? I had the strip. Was I'm that, reading. I'm reading about this now. Johnny Hodgson. It looks terrible, man. I, I'm just seeing that his parents managed. 
Yeah, it's fucking rotten. Aye, man, I just see that the parents are there and won't leave his sight. Uh, sorry, side. So, aye, man, that, that is brutal. I'm just trying to find exact something I could share on Twitter or something like that on well, Facebook. Yeah, we'll that, try and get that, it. My thing is, like, over here, like, Perth Glory did a friendly match with his team and they, they raised, like, eight grand or something like that. And I played in Canberra um, for about six years at, like, a high level. And I, I know a few people here, so I, I said to my mate the other day, I was like, do you think we can arrange like a friendly game or something? Then we'll get one of the boys, Adam Rogic, who used to play for his brother's Tom. Um, I was like, can we get a signed shirt over here? And then one of the boys, Thomas James, used to play for Perth Glory. I was like, can we get Daniel Sturridge signed shirt? And then one of my Greek mates knows what's the tennis player? It's an asshole, Kyrgios. Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick Kyrgios. Uh, can we get a signed like tennis racket? So I made a few phone calls a day, and everyone's like, "Aye, of course we can." But like, once COVID lifts, we'll try and do a charity match. And then it got me brilliant. thinking. And I was like, I listen to podcasts all the time, and even though you guys are back in fucking Scotland, so I was like, even if I should be doing something, podcast, uh, even if yeah. even if it's fucking two hundred pound, like, it doesn't fucking matter. But it's more just to raise a bit of awareness and yeah. support the family. You know what I mean? Well, listen, uh, you've certainly done that today, Steam, so really appreciate you, you coming on and make us aware of that, because it's a terrible story. And uh, fingers crossed the lad can, you know, get well. Pulls through. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Hopefully he pulls through, but even just a wee share. A wee... Aye, that's what... Yeah. Try, if you get his own Twitter or Facebook, and we can, we can maybe DM each other and try and come up with something, mate. 100%. I was, I was wishing Pardon was on because my, my ma used to work with his dad and I had some funny stories, but I'll, I'll keep it for the next time. Right, we'll definitely keep them because we want to embarrass him like as a, much. I'll make, it, I'll make it like a tall big brother fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Super. Stephen, listen, thanks very much for coming on. What time is it in Australia just now? Uh, 12.38 a.m. You can hear what tomorrow? A day actually, and it was the missus birthday the night, and she was like, We're going to bed, and she was trying to get a wee bit jiggy with it. And I was like, No, nah, I'm getting on the podcast with Radio and the boys. <laughs> nice one. Listen, I can't believe football daft is stopping boys getting their hole here. Come on, right? You get off the phone and away, try and wake her up. <laughs> that just shows you how far it goes. You know what I mean? You boys, <laughs> <laughs> like... oh, Steven, thank bit. you very much for coming on, pal. Take care. Happy right, birthday to your missus. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Take care and remember and cheer Danny Hodgkin, H7. And it's just a quick open line this week, and that is it for it. Uh, if you want to be on next week, get in touch via the usual social media channels. Football dafts. Big question. Now, I've got to say, Chris, hats off to the Celtic social media team this week. After Jota scored against Aberdeen at the weekend, they went straight to it. And because he looks a bit like George Michael, they went for you yacht to have faith, which you got to applaud that. But I, I like a good pun. I like a good pun. And that, that was a, that was an absolute cracker. Well. That was a cracker. So this week, inspired by that, we thought we'd throw it out on the big question to take someone or something from Scottish football and turn it into a song. And we got a couple of belters coming in. You boys have got a couple up your sleeve, though. Um, in the Air United tonight. <laughs> that is good. It is good. Strumming my pain with his fingers. Singing my life with his words. Kelly me softly with his song. <laughs> Kelly me softly <laughs> with his song. <laughs> Two ears, sure, one's there. Good. Uh, some belters coming in from the listeners, though. All right, all right. Okay, Ethan says Kamara Chameleon. <laughs> I pointed it. That's a good point. You sing uh, Bona 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 Barisic. Kamara, 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 Kamara. It doesn't work. Nah, that's no, harder. Kamara, 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 Kamara. No, it doesn't work, does it? No. Kamara, 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 Kamara. Kamara. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Right, Martin's come in with For Whom the Bell Crystals. That's a good point. Hey, that's good. It, Robbie's saying, what's the story, Eamon Brophy? What's the story? <laughs> they must <laughs> sing that. Oh, that's Ross McCrory. Ah, oh, it is, isn't it? Ah, oh, they did do that, didn't they? What's the story, oh, Ross was McCrory? It oh, that works better, aye. Uh, the Lone Ranger says, Pakuna Sakala. What a wonderful phrase. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Uh, Stephen says to David Bowie's star man, Oh god, I don't know the name. I don't know how to sing as Junior. There's a star for it. There's a star for 
got lost inside the box. He'd like to tackle forwards, but he doesn't know how. It doesn't really scan <laughs> well. Uh, no, you've not you, done great there, Stephen. The I'll be honest. Felt, like, we need to think of something to with the box to make that work. Right, Jesus, this is one. Sean says, "Don't stand so close <laughs> to me, delico <laughs> of love, broad footless." <laughs> Uh, don't stand so close to me. <laughs> that's, a that's a look. That's a look. I the look cool love. love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. We've got Ross says. <laughs> and they sing that. <laughs> don't let the sun go down on Stevie May. <laughs> this is my favourite one. They got it. Everybody's doing a brand new dance now. <laughs> Come on, baby, do Kyogo motion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're fucking stretched there. You're stretched there, Louis. That was Louis. Yeah, that's funny. Um, what, what, what song's this? Rock and uh, Simon. We're going to rock down to Ange. We're going to rock down, down to Ange. I want to argue Eddie Grant as a belter. Uh, Ricky, you might be this one. Ricky says Jason Cummings, Eileen. <laughs> Jason Cummings, Eileen. <laughs> I don't know the second song. See, Ian yeah. Hawks the head. Ian, Ian Hawks the head of the angels <laughs> sing. <laughs> Glory to the newborn king. Uh, John says Groove is in Johannes. <laughs> oh, Ian says I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy, sexy boy. boy. I'm not your boy toy. Boy toy. <laughs> and Albert's legend says. Hi, my name is what? My name is who? My name is James Grady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. The champions of Below the Waist Grooming are here to save your balls. You heard that right? Manscaped. The best of the best and world champions of men grooming are here so you say stay clean and take care of yourself where it matters most. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Join the movement for all of your below the waist grooming needs with the code DAFT at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping off your order. I've been using Manscaped this week. I've been using the ball toner. I've been using the clippers. My balls are looking great. How about anybody else? My balls are always looking great, man. I went to town. I went to town and my wife went, what have you done? <laughs> and that's it. His wife's like, I'm not getting them in my teeth anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Take it out my teeth. Get it out my teeth. That's why Manscaped has a performance package. The thing is, they are the real deal. The ultimate grooming package for a champion. Included. Is the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created, the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the weed whacker for your nose and ear hair, liquid formulations, plus a free travel bag and boxers. This package stars the redesigned electric trimmer, the Lawnmower. The trimmer is simply the best hygiene tool for the modern man, perfect for a proper footballer all over the globe. This fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7000 RPM motor, a new multi function on off switch, can engage a travel lock, and it's even waterproof. It also comes with the weed whacker and the ear and the nose and the hair trimmer. It's waterproof. It uses 9000 RPM motor power 360 degree rotary dual blade system, and the nose and the ear hair trimmer provides proprietary skin safe technology technology which helps prevent nicks, snags, tugs and those delicate holes. And you can't forget about the liquid formulations to keep your balls feeling their best from kick off to final whistle. Use the crop preserver to feel fresh and a crop reviver to give your balls a boost at half time. This package is head to toe top class and an easy choice for the best footballers in Europe. Get 20% off in free shipping with the code daft at manscaped.com. Get the perfect package for your package and be a champion. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code DAFT. Shoot for glory this year with the best tools from the job from Manscaped. We'll just keep the music going because you two haven't heard this in a wee while, have you? Ho, ho, ho! John, have you ever heard that? No. Shut up. That's pathetic. <laughs> did he play that before the B and Q Cup jump? <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>
It is the Player Profile Playoff with PieSports.com, bringing you the taste of Scottish football direct to your door. You can get yourself some Scotch pie, steak and gravy, macaroni, chicken curry, chicken and chorizo, all coming to your door. They've got brilliant selection up there. You can pick out your favourite formation. You can get the 4-4-2, the 4-3-3. Every sort of formation on there on their website, so check it and out. If your hips are high, Brock's the four, no, three, four, what, three, four, two. Was it three, four, two? Aye, well, uh, Brock needs to be sent off on the hand, doesn't he? Ugh. the league and you ain't no. <laughs> you ain't no? That's a double <laughs> negative, Grimo. That means we're top of the league. <laughs> um, you can also give them a call, 0141 79 However, we like to give away pies on this show to our faithful <laughs> listeners. Uh, and this week is no change as we welcome Billy to the show. How you doing, Billy? Stop, you got a Billy on here, is it? <laughs> <laughs> a, a Billy wearing a Rangers top and with a Union flag in the Byron. Uh, How you doing? Staunch. Uh, no, I, I'm a nervous fucking wreck. I've never done one of those <laughs> I'm, sit- I'm sitting here sweet in my parent. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But I'll let you have it. This is your first time, you'll have it. I'm not going to set the camera right. I'm going to get the Rangers tap on. I'm going to get a flag all. put up on the wall. I'm going, to get my, I'm going to get my John Knox poster <laughs> in, in the background there. I'm just in just for my work. I was the fat fault of the flare try to get him in time for it. How would you do? I'm a CNC engineer if you came with us. Is that today with nautical? No. Uh, it's an island, island gas. Oh, island gas, oh, oh, island gas, island gas, island gas, island gas. He must make a few. Oh, I tell you, money here, Billy. Eh? Uh, no enough, no can enough. He, can he afford a big union jack like that unless you're bringing in <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the funds? <laughs> Check out Billy's Union Jack on the video version, patreon.com forward slash football. Now. Um, listen, Billy, I've got a coin here. I'm going to flip it. Heads is you're playing Grado, tails it's all. Oh, uh, uh, Tails, so oh. it's an old firm derby. There we go. Here we go. Um, before we go on, Billy, I need to get your buzzer. What is it going to be? Oh, uh, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Very original. Billy. Good. I like that. Uh, go to yours this week, Chris. Tim. Tim. <laughs> We've got Billy and Tim there. Uh, you know the rules, boys. I'm going to read out a player description. Uh, buzz in if you know the answer. If you buzz in, you'll miss your opportunity if you get it wrong in the Player uh, play passes to the other player. Uh, first to two wins. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. As it's international week, I've taken some of the current Scotland squad, okay. so it's quite easy and quite quick. So you better okay. be quick on your buzzer, Billy. There's a good chance I'll fuck this. Right. Okay. Right. You ready for the first player? With three Scotland caps to his name, this lad is the youngest. Tim. Me- Billy Gilmore. Fucked it. I'll continue with <laughs> I the, love it when he says that. I will continue with the clue for you, Billy. This lad is the youngest member of the squad at the age of 19. He made his first start against Moldova and his current Nathan Parson. One nil Billy. One nil Billy. Fucking Nathan Parson. There you are. Right, next player up. Here we go. This 30-year-old started his career at Hull and didn't receive his first cop until 2016 in a friendly against Denmark. He then had to wait three years to make his debut in a one to defeat to Russia. That. He qualifies Billy. Billy. Yeah, uh, let me jump in there. Uh, Andy Robertson. No. Oh, that's who I thought. No, no, no. no. He started. Uh, just when he said Hull. Oh, but I thought maybe he'd get picked when he, for Scotland when he I'll played at Hull. I'll continue with the clue for John. Chris. Please he do. qualifies for Scotland mm-hmm. through his grandparents from Bonesse and started his first game in the U- started the first game at the Euros. He is currently captain of Leeds United. Oh, you're a bastard. Oh, you don't tell me you fucking forgot the captain of Leeds United considering you're meant to be a Leeds supporter. I'm a Leeds supporter, and you know what? I always fucking forget his name. You better get it, because I've only got one more player to go here. Right. Center half, Leeds captain. Uh, do you know what? I, I always fucking completely blank on this guy. I'm not even joking. You're joking. Jo- Billy, I'm going to let you back in. Do you know who, what player it is? Uh, Liam Cooper, his name. Well, Cooper. yeah. That's what I thought. I'm Liam not... Cooper. Right, read I'm going to give you... I'm read, gonna... read, out the, read out the last one. I'll, 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 I'll do the last one. I'm going to give it to Billy. You're you usually quite good at this, Chris. I know, mate. <laughs> oh, I don't know what's <laughs> happened to me. He's maybe be good at this, and he's a fucking Leeds United supporter. Oh, he's on my so team, he I fucking forgot. Fucking hell. Name. Don't you know your team's captain, eh? No, no. Um, right, remember. final player, here we go. This player now finds himself playing in the Champions League against the likes of Leipzig Tim. and Paris Saint-Germain. John Henry. 
No, Jack wrong. Henry, Jack Henry, no, Jack Henry. I'm going to your first answer, Chris. Fuck you, John. Since we've moved to the Belgian League, he has flourished and joined Bruges in the summer from Oostend. Ja- Before Henry. that, he only managed 15 games at Celtic after a move from Dundee. Who do you think it might be, Billy? Oh, Jack Henry. Oh, Henry. it might be Jack Henry. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have won the prize. Awesome. Well done, sir. Well done, well done, done Billy. Billy. Uh, cheers. Congratulations, sir. You have vanquished the champion. Take a bow, son. Stand up and take a bow, go. Oh no, Gary, I'm up the yeah. side of my front here. No, <laughs> <laughs> boy, boy, listen, you've got pies, and if you want to get pies, go to piesports.com, <laughs> get yourself to me, sorted yeah. out. Um, and if you want to play next week, look out for the tweet on our socials. Three riddles on football day. Welcome to another edition of Gradles Three Riddles. The score's currently set at. Oh no, Chris is in the lead now, isn't it? Oh, no, Thirteen eleven something. Thirteen twelve. Thirteen twelve. Yeah. Right. Let's get told right into this. I'm going to go right for the start. Phoning when you're freezing in her trees. Phoning. Phoning. Colin Calderwood. You're a prick. How'd you oh! get that? Well done, mate. That is good. I was going. To, I had Colin, but I was. I was. Oh, right. I was okay. Right. Okay. But it's, that's good. That is good. Even though I don't like getting these in the mail, I am happy. Bill McMurdo. Bill. No, it's not Bill. I am happy. Bill. 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 Bill Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy, Bill. That well-known Scottish football person, Bill Smiley. Bill, Billy Dodd. Billy Dodds doesn't make sense. Happy? No, sorry. Even though I don't like getting these in the mail, I am happy. <laughs> Bill. Bill McMurdo. No. Bill. Bill Glad. Glad. <laughs> Bill Gladstone. No, it's a cold with that. <laughs> Um, are, we, are, we, are we out with Bill? Aye. Are we out with Bill? Oh, fuck. Right. Hmm. I thought that was an obvious one. I don't get these in the mail. I don't like getting these in the mail. No, you've got Bill. That's All right, OK, it's All Bill. Right, I thought you were right. Bill. Right. Okay. Bill. Even though I don't like getting these in the mail, I'm happy. Happy. <laughs> Bill. Bill smile. Bill cheeser. Bill laugh. Bill. <laughs> Bill. Is it Bill or Billy? I mean, I don't really want to say, but... Wait, don't say How many footballs do you know called Bill? Come on. Billy, Billy Gladmore. <laughs> 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 it's no... All right, I'll give you a clue. It's no, like, how you feel. Like, oh, it's right. something else. It's like, I just thought it would connect. Billy Farrell. Oh, there's, a coffee there's, machine a, on. there's a fucking coffee machine on. No. Uh, I think I'm stumped for this one. Billy be. Farrell. I don't know. No. Pharrell Farrell. That's what I was going to, I don't even know who that is. Played for um, oh. Arbroath in 1978. Because I'm happy. Why would I pick some country that played in Arbroath in 1978? Billy Williams? No. Nah. Bill. <laughs> right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give you a clue here. Right, Are you looking at my phone, you, you man? I'm not looking. Right. I'll give you a clue. Right. I follow him. Bill Gilmore. Bye! Bill Gilmore! Gilmore. <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Oh, I said Billy Gilmore. Oh, that's what he laughed when I said Billy Gladmore. That is good. That is good. Right, okay. Here right, we go. One back, thank God. 14, 13. Right, here we go. Here's, Here's, the, final. Here's the final bit. <clears throat> right. Spanish football chant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've scalded myself in McDonald's. Spanish football chant. Oh, yeah. I've sc- <laughs> I was scolded myself in I did it didn't need a sound effect. I could right, right. Spanish fit my chant. I've scolded myself in McDonald's. Oh way. Spanish football chant, oh way. No. Oh we gonna social. <laughs> no, because that would be oh, so yeah. I was thinking say her, so shit or say her. <laughs> uh, that's, that's... 
I like got scalp skin. Nah. <laughs> Only Selenko. I can't believe you're going to get this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Only we can on the track, will we? No. No. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Spanish football chant. Oh, Ollie McBurney. <laughs> It is time for the El Dorado Swanky Moment of the Week. Remember, ask for LD at any swanky bar. It's easy to drink, it's short, fruity, and finished with a trace of caffeine. And the El Dorado boys are going to come into the studio quite soon. They've got a swanky big Cadillac, El Dorado Cadillac, so they're going to come in, and they've got a special surprise for Grado on the way. Oh, nice one. So, what was that? Um, it's available at your local convenience store. You can follow them now on Facebook, Instagram, at El Dorado, El Dorado Tonic Wine, or check them out at eldoradotonicwine.com. Uh, to swell, celebrate the swanky taste of El Dorado, we pick out our swanky moments from Scottish football from the week and leave you to vote on it on our Twitter at Football Daft Pod. The results are in from last week, boys. Are we ready for the results? Let's Drum roll, it. please. I'm, I'm really guess we Drum can. roll, please. Thank you, Chris. In last place, with 9.3%, it's Grado with Sebastian Thill's tattoo. Next up... Oh, right, right. <laughs> you can't remember it. Next up, Chris Toe with Lennon Miller's uh, goal for, uh, for Motherwell, which was an absolute you, cracker. I, I hope Lennon Miller signs for Rangers, because you'll maybe get some fucking votes. <laughs> <laughs> 15.1%. In second place, it was me, 23.3%, with uh, Montrose's use of AJ Styles' Royal Rumble debut to intro new signing, Cami Ballantyne. <laughs> and the winner this week is the, from the listeners, John McLaughlin's penalty save. What a shock. 52.3% of the vote that got. We've got more... Uh... Gavin Swanky. Oh, yeah, we've I got the Gavin Swanky. I was going to say you were just going to play it over the top. Oh, right, before... We, we can debut it here just we'll now. We'll debut it here. So we talked about it early on in the, the process of the Swanky moment. We thought, wouldn't it be brilliant, wouldn't it be brilliant if we get our bros Gavin Swanky to introduce the Swanky moment of the week. Grado spoke to his friend Ricky Little, and we have made it happen. Here is Gavin Swanky. This is Gavin Swanky, and this is the El Dorado Swanky moment of the week. <laughs> so amazing. Wait, wait another one at all. This is Gavin Swanky, and this is the El Dorado Swanky moment of the week. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> that's better. It gives it large. So thank you very much to Gavin you Swanky can, for you doing can tell that. He's went. Brilliant, brilliant. So thank you very much for Gavin Swanky for providing that. Um so boys, what's your swanky moment of the week? Togo first. My swanky moment of the week is Alfredo Morelos' winner yep. against Hibbs. Aye. The pressure the boy was under, the amount of the amount of it was the amount of stuff that was riding on it, you know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. a huge moment. I feel it's a huge moment in the season. Mm-hmm. Hold and on. I, I just think it's a swanky moment of the week. Hold nice. on. You are seriously backing a Rangers goal for swanky moment Listen, of the week. See, when you see swank, you've mm. just got to doff your cap to him. <laughs> right. Okay. Your choice, Chris. Um, Grado, what is your. Mine's has got to be without a doubt. I mean, it's there's been a th- few highlights for the weekend, a few swanky moments, but for me, it's got to be the superstar himself, Kyogo, just in it. Um, against Aberdeen. Oh, no, hold on. Hold uh, on. Just uh, honestly, an unbelievable bit of skill. The, 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 the amount he brings to that Celtic side, um, he makes such a difference and it could uh, it, it could be such an important player in the, the run in, in the end of the season. So my spanky moment of the week is when Kyogo chested it against Aberdeen. What's yours, John? Dindy, no, no, no. no, no. Fairman's third goal at the weekend. Did they score three? I don't no, know. No, no, no. Hold on a minute, right? You, you're choosing a Rangers moment. No. You're choosing... A Celtic moment. Listen, this is a non-sectarian podcast, mate. We don't care. Okay. You know, we're, we, we're about football, aren't we, Greg? We're all about football. Sorry. Hands across the... I've, like, listen, I appreciate that. Hands across the divide. Hands across the divide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you win, too. I hope you win, Greg. <laughs> I hope you win. <laughs> Something's going on here. Something's not quite right. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> right. Um, I am... A light... <laughs> Sean in the night, somewhere ahead. Handy. Oh, I'll 
Something's not quite right. Anyway, I am going to nominate my nomination for the Swanky Motor of the Week is Ricky Foster's Shaggy. <laughs> Ricky Foster's. Hi, <laughs> Sky so all of a sudden. Ricky. <laughs> Is it, is it his socks? No, his shacket that he wore on sports scene at the weekend. His jacket? Shacket. What's a shacket? Do you not know what a shacket is? is it a shirt a jacket? I am a big fan of the shacket. It's like a cross between a shirt and a jacket. So you wear it like over a t-shirt. It's like a jacket, but like, it's also like a, like like a, a shirt. Like a plaid, like, a, like, like Mick Foley's plaid shirt know. kind of thing. A wee bit, a wee bit, but it's not as um, like fleecy as Mick Foley's. It's like a... It's, yeah, I'll, I'll, do you know what? I'll wear my shacket next week for you, Chris. Or we could invite friend of the show, Ricky Foster, back on. Yeah, on his shacket. But it was a fantastic shacket. He wore it in sports. It was like a denim number. Really liked it. So, I see, Ricky, you can't, you can't hide that Amy McDonald. Oh, you, money. Uh, you want to see? You want to see? He had a nice pair of socks actually on. Uh, By anyway. the way, the guy cuts a fine figure of a man. Let's he's a good looking fella. He's a good, Amy's a very lucky lady. She is. Yeah, he's lucky. She's got on the money. She's minted. Um, but uh, what? I'm sure he's got a few bob and all. Uh, I think he does all right for himself as well. To be fair. Uh, so that is swanky moments from us. The swanky moment of the week from the listeners of this week comes from Matthew, and he's nominating the Dunfermline statement. Now, did you boys see this? No. They basically went to town on their fans and basically lectured their fans, and it's all fucking kicking off in Dunfermline. Oh, let's see. Oh, what, what is it for? What are they? Uh, well, the, the fans have obviously come up against Peter Grant and our poor result of the week weekend there. They've got a run of games. I was speaking to Stephen at my work, who's a massive Dunfermline uh, supporter. They've got a run of games of, like, Kilmarnock, Wraith Rovers, Arbroath and Partick Thistle coming up and the board have basically came out and completely backed Peter Grant and the fans are going fucking mental because they basically at the end of the statement basically said and you lot, you better shut up. So <laughs> <I love laughs> it, is, it was I'm fucking... A, I'm a big fan of that behaviour. Right. Fucking pretty brutal. Unless uh, it's my club. Uh, is Grado reading it now, is he? Hey, we're not reading this or then. Wait till we see what he says. The Dunn family statement was posted two days ago. Um, what do we see? I want to get to the end here because it's fucking mad. Right. The Finally, the board would like to state that the behaviour of a handful of supporters at the end was completely unacceptable and has been highlighted. Uh, we can accept everyone is frustrated and disappointed or indeed angered by not winning the matches, but there can be no excuse for that type of behaviour. In addition, the original members of the board are made up of supporters themselves who have acted on a voluntary basis the last eight years, but in recent weeks, level abuse directed towards them has become totally unacceptable. Now is not the time to say any more on that subject, as our energy has to be focused on winning football. However, the events of the last few weeks have certainly not made for a positive portrayal of our club to our new investors and potential supporters. Oh, so basically, you're yeah, saying, fuck off, the supporters, uh, we're in know, charge. I wonder what's happened, because it, they said behaviour at the end of the game. Have they tried to have a go at him or something like that? Because Peter Grant will dismantle them. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? That is true. But I mean, we had Peter Grant in the show. He's probably we'll forgave them guy. already, man. He is quite a religious guy. Um, <laughs> yes. he, went, he went home and prayed for their souls. <laughs> he's a lovely guy. Uh, yes, yeah, he's a lovely done, guy. You know, Dunfermline in a bit of a state at the moment. So we'll wait and see what happens there. So the Dunfermline statement is getting nominated for our swanky moment of the week from the listeners this week. Um, so that's your nominations. Chris Toe, what are you nominating? Alfredo Morelos is winning. Brilliant. Today, I, yeah. I just wanted to hear that again. Grado, what are you nominating? Can you go chest against Aberdeen? Brilliant. I'm nominating Ricky Foster's Shacket. And the, Matthew is putting forward the Dunfermline statement. So if you want to vote on any of those, check out our Twitter. Vote for your swanky moment of the week. And remember, El Dorado Tonic Wine, Scotland's own, is now Football Daft. Daft. Remember, you can get more content from Football Daft. We are on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's a service that will get you more content from us. You subscribe each month, pick your tier. On the service, you'll get things like the video version. That's on our like lower tier. I think it's like five pound a month or something like yeah. that. Um, you'll get free T-shirts on our upper tier. You get a chance to come into the studio, which we're going to start really, really soon once Stephen gets back. Um, we thought we'd wait for Stephen because he's the big star of the show, isn't he? Excuse me, sir. Oh, so, sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. Well, I have to say, when I was out in Glasgow with you, you got more selfies than Stephen and Grado put together anyway. Ah, uh, well, you know, like I said, um, people see a dwarf and they want a photo of him. That is true. And they usually want to lift you as well for some reason. I don't uh, get that. Uh, Why no, do people want I'm to not, lift you, I'm Chris? Not, I'm not down with that shit, mate. No. And if you've ever tried to lift me, it's no, it's no <laughs> me. It's not an easy task. Do you know all the boys in the wrestling? 
comment on how heavy I am. Really? Aye. So, okay. there you go. Don't lift Chris, all right? Exactly. Um, but yeah, you can get more stuff at patreon.com forward slash football daft from us. Uh, we've got up their teammates, which we've done for the last year or so, and uh, we're playing out some of the old teammates on the show. Um, one of our favourite, favourite guests that has been on the show is Mark Reynolds, famous for the uh, infamous Archie Knox spunk or shite bag story. If you've not heard that, you've got to go back into the archives and listen to the interview with Mark Reynolds. But here he is uh, talking about his teammates from the likes of Dundee United, Aberdeen and Motherwell. Worst dressed. Worst dressed. I'm, go- I'm going to go back to my Aberdeen days with a good friend with Adam Rooney. His game was terrible. Uh, he used to wear, I'll give you a highlight we wore when it was snowing. He used to wear in Dunlop Wellies that he bought for his post today. <laughs> that, that was a high- that was a highlight in his wardrobe. <laughs> Old spinnet. Did he have the big mug and all? <laughs> 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 he used to his coffee side, but he uh, used to be the dumb ops in to, uh, to train. And he thought that was fine. It wasn't even as if it was banter or it was a uh, last gasp resort. That was just his, his, his wardrobe every day. Moniest. <clears throat> Moniest, I guess. I'm going to say it. probably Willow Flood. Don't know if he's have come across Willow Flood much, but oh, I hear. I, we heard him on the podcast. He you, looks you, Moni. Were you on the podca- I, I, podcast, Bob, when, when we had uh, Willow Flood? Oh, Flo- I wasn't there, no. no. Aye, Aye, man. He's kind of like a, I don't know, he was kind of, it was a kind of weird sense of humour. He had like right dry sense of humour, just kind of dead laid back and kind of. Aye, well, he uh, wasn't even laid like, back in a change room. He was the, mo- he was the Moni's guy. He'll have a couple <laughs> I, I can imagine that. Who do you want to back you up in a fight? I'll go, I'll go there, I'll stay current with Dundee United. Callum Butcher can handle himself, he's a big better boy. Aye. I've yeah. lost a rag a few times and I, I've, I've often thought, wouldn't they like to be on the other side of that? So I, <laughs> I'm very happy if he was steaming over the top of me if something went wrong. Best looking? Best looking? Uh, I've got a few more to be fair. <laughs> Cammy Smith just left us, right? And my wife loves Cammy Smith, which is no great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and me and Cam used to car scare, uh, car share into training, and uh, Cam used to meet at the gym. Quite, I mean, I'm now I'm speaking this, I'm starting to worry here. <laughs> but she used to meet at the gym. She used to say, "Oh, Cam is Miss Love. He's a, a lovely looking wee boy, you know." And so I would say, Cam, he's a, a dead hands wee guy, and he's, he's absolutely shredded as well. So he's got a lot going from him. I, I mean, my wife picked me, so she must have a good taste. So. I can't. <laughs> That's funny. See, just a wee segue there, Bob. Did you ever get that in River City, right? When there's a new character oh, comes to River City, I your missus job, goes. Jordan all the time. Jordan. Ah, there you. Aye, and I just, I just know my missus is going like that when she watches it. Oh, he's good, Jordan. Isn't he? He's good. And you're like, <laughs> aye. He's, he's a good pal of mine. You know what I mean? But I don't know what you mean. Mark, it gets a bit. You start going like that. What you? You're sitting there thinking. I was actually, just, I was just joining the doors as I was coming out from Ruthie. Thinking, wait a minute, here. Thank God he's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> teacher's pet. We've just got a new gaffer in, so everybody's still vying for teacher's pet. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I'm trying to use my captain say as, as a wee extra in the door and, and come in and see him. But I, the, the gaffer now, we've not really, he's not really showed his allegiance yet. We don't know who his favourite is. I'm trying to up my Aberdeen. Uh, the easy one at Aberdeen was Johnny Hayes. He hey, was hi. A, hi. Teacher's pet, love. That's why I went back there, man. It's like a 33 year old, 33 year old winger, my three year deal. He can help me with it. Aye, Johnny Hayes, teach just in, aye, in for a coffee, in for a chat, phone him. Aye, loves him, loved him. They loved what about each other. Uh, <laughs> just that. Uh, well, just they train just a lot of time for each other, as you can still see. So, aye, that was aye. Good. Johnny Hayes with him and Dale were, were and still are very tight. Best you've played with? See, I've been asked this a few times, and the answer, the answer I've always stuck in, I'm still sticking to is Ryan Christie. Right, aye. I rate Ryan Christie very highly. I remember when he when he signed at Aberdeen on loan, and his first few training sessions, I remember thinking Celtic must be unbelievable if he can't get anywhere near it. He had, he, for me, he had different, and I think he's, you're starting to see that now. He's, he's kind of stepping up as a kind of more senior player, but yeah, just very good on the ball, athletic, can run all day, set pieces. He's got a wee bit of nastiness in him as well. He likes to lash out with a kick and that, which I think he needs. Oh, right. Right. He's got the bad bit in him, hasn't he? I've noticed that he's got the bad bit in him. Yeah, and, he, and he, you know, sometimes it builds over, but he keeps it just kind of bubbling under there. And I think, as you say, you need that. So, I, for me, Ryan Fisk, and then again, forward closer, I was lucky enough that James Madison was up at Aberdeen for, for six months a year, and, and he was technically, again, came alone to us. What, what and, what Came alone at us, and, and you're thinking like this young guy. But he, he just moved to Norwich for four million pounds. So he was already yeah. a, people would recognise he was a very good player. And 
Aye. I mean, his first day in training, I mean, and the thing is, he came obviously to develop, but he, he just obsessed with nutmegs and skinning people and putting it in the top bag and that. And like, his technique was unbelievable. Like, he, he, the Scottish team didn't really suit him, the way we played didn't really suit him, but like, his ability was unbelievable. And you could see him down in the prem, but he was, uh, he'd be a very cool thing. I mean, he used to do free kicks after training. And boys would do them, and you'd maybe see boys hitting. So we've got like a target net where there's wee, wee corners cut out, and you see boys going over the wall, maybe scoring two or three out of ten. Madders was like nine out of ten, ten out of ten every day. Like right. his technique, I was a joke. Like it was, it was, it was brilliant to watch as well. But uh, he's. Yeah, I, I remember a free kick he scored against Rangers at Petodre. Thank you. That was what I couldn't believe it, man. Sure, it was near the end. Last couple of minutes of the game. That's aye. going. And, uh, it's I, one of the ones that hits the crossbar and the post at the same time. Nice, nice. Phenomenal. At the phenomenal. Point, he used to do that in training every day, so it was, I, he was technically he's probably one of the best players I've ever seen. Aye. Who never gets the round in? There's a few. To be fair, the, the, the one that gets the... I've no really experience of it. Nicky Clark is a bad rep at United. Really? Aye. Why did I get the feeling we've had somebody say this before? Somebody Shank- has mentioned him before. Somebody has mentioned him before. That's <laughs> I'm not joking. Was it, was it no Shankland? I've got to say, Shankland said to me he was on at the day because I was standing there. Was it no like, Warren Shankland? They mentioned Nicky Cox saying he was quite tight. Uh, it's a reputation he gets, and he's got some. He's got plenty of cash in that, but he just died. Uh, oh, well, you, you know what? He's had. He's had a successful hairdressing career for years. Do you know what I mean? You think he's <laughs> a biggest bam up merchant? Again, there's a few. With a few at Aberdeen, there's been a few stories that got released at Aberdeen for the, the wind up. But again, Johnny Hayes was a big, big wind up merchant. Um, enjoyed. He went through a six month period of enjoyed going to the toilet and people's clothes and shoes. <laughs> uh, so he, Johnny Hayes is, was it was always at something. So I uh, he's a, a big wind up merchant. But it was I. Uh, there was a period of time where he was taking a number two in anywhere but a toilet, and it was. <laughs> uh, and it just it got to say where it got acceptable, which I'm embarrassed that I was in a change room that was just accepted that you would go and find like he took a shit in your right. people. We Danny Rogers and his gloves. He sent him, used to, and he used to post them to him. <laughs> like he never even just done it. Like he used to get his gloves and say, oh, you left your gloves and take a shit and then post them, didn't you? Done it with a pair of boots. Oh, <laughs> no, man. One of the boys left a, left a jacket, left his jacket, and, and then get sold. And Johnny says, I'll post it, don't you? And I shit in the pocket. Oh. Right, was, <laughs> oh no, man. That's, 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 that's a different level, man. That that, isn't it? Especially getting used to uh, it. Like, where's my soul? Next to Johnny Hayes, he's shite, man. Just step out of that. <laughs> 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 and boys would just clean, clean the boots out and sign them and give them to somebody. <laughs> 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 that never happened. That never happened. I want to go on record with any legal liabilities. That never, never. <laughs> oh, that never happened, mate. Top Shagger. Yeah, it's a hard one as well because a lot of people are married, so I don't want to name them. Aye, it's, it's, it's always one they get sidestepped quite a bit. When you try to say a lot of them are married, does that mean this happens quite a lot then? Aye, <laughs> <laughs> I we're all married, man, so we need to watch for the court. Yeah. The, the, only, the only person that was right in with the answer right away was when we had Bob Malcolm on, he just went to McGregor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. Easy answer. Aye, we've, not, we've not really had any profit. Most of the changes around have been in have been set with boys, so it's. Aye. Yeah. Quiet, so I, I'm going after a Do you think we should change that question to the worst, the worst shagger? <laughs> right, well, no one of them I see shagging, to be honest, so that was the <laughs> thing. The only one you've seen shagging is Johnny Hayes. He just, <laughs> <laughs> he just shags everywhere. Nobody wants, nobody wants to hear that either. <laughs> no, man, definitely not. So that's it for Football Daft for this week. Thank you very much for joining us as ever on the show. Stephen Purden, do we think he will be back next week? No comment. No comment. I, I don't know. You never know. I know that in he's... This, in this day and age. He's got to do his mass in the shows. Yeah, he, he is absolutely gutted. So fingers crossed that he comes back. What he's up to the weekend? You going to watch the Scotland game? Yes. I've got two christenings, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Two christenings? Uh, and I've got dentist and I need to boost. That's why we've got a wee short show. I've got root canal treatment and a and a and a thing where we are. I've got a, I've got a hygienist and the doctor. Not a doctor. Oh, you get a 
Polishing oh, scale. Or a, a Fisher oh. Seals and all that shit, whatever that is. What's a Fisher Seal again? Fisher Seal, it's when you're a wind, do you know? Oh, is he not still getting them anywhere? <laughs> is he not getting them anywhere now? I thought it was like, oh, Fisher Price, that's what I'm saying, man. Fisher Seal. Aye, Fisher Seal, and it's got white stuff over the top of your teeth, so your teeth didn't disintegrate teeth when you were a wind. My teeth, mate, honestly. See the, see the matter what that I'm needing done, honestly, I'm telling you. Okay, though, my teeth are like a rock in them tenements. It's passion, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I do brush my teeth, man. It's still late, so right? Yeah, brush my teeth sweeties. twice every day. I think it's a flossing, man. I never, I've, I've not got the flossing. Nah. Yeah, anyway, I better go, man. See you later. Right, well, there you see go. There's the Greedo's going to the dentist. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> see you later. Bye. I can't believe I left you yourself, John. I'm going to brush my teeth in the toilet. Not first. Right. Uh, okay. Just yeah, don't yeah, leave what you left in that toilet earlier on, you manky bastard. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, you, you thumb all. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Tooth, but there we go. Smells the way Tiger Bum smells. He's bought himself a toothbrush as well. Fresh out the packet. There we go. Great, right. So that's a uh, Gradle gone. Uh, Chris, um, anything to add to oh, the podcast? I don't know what you like to talk about, John. We've got, we've got a bit of time on hands here. We can actually talk about football if you want. Do you know what you're doing? Ah, stop. Fuck it.